then, um, as we've uh, broken the central hall, um, Phil has dispatched me into the north hall, which uh, is not broken, uh, and that's got cars and 3D printing. Now, 3D printing doesn't do very much for me, so I thought we'd have a look at some cars, and we'll see where we go from there. I would pay literally some money to watch someone trying to manoeuvre this around the villages where my parents live. It is, well, it makes the Bentayga look like a matchbox car. It's just absolutely ridiculous. Um, uh, you know, as I say, we're now some seconds into this. I'm, I've struggled about halfway around it. Uh, I mean, despite the sheer vastness of it, it seats four, obviously. And um, presumably you can use that engine to restart a planet if you needed to. But, uh, yeah, good start. Now, in sharp contrast to the enormous pickup truck, this is very small, must be said by the standards of American customization, very subtle, and it, ah, oh, it, I don't know how well it's coming out on the video, but it is absolutely bloody lovely. Also, it's not gonna hang around. If you see down here, um, it's got a 2.4 litre um, version of the Volkswagen Type 4 engine with a Porsche 911 turbo gearbox. The chances are, it's not gonna hang around. And it's a proper split screen as well. Um, you know, I don't get as excited about these things as true Volkswagen fans, but this is indisputably a lovely thing. I mean, it's probably got some audio. Oh, look, it's got some audio in there. I shall diligently point in and go, there you are. But really, I'd get rid of that because you want to save some weight and go even faster. But yeah, I, I, I could find house room for that. Just so you know, your future, in all sense of the word, are these. If you want your car to drive itself and, you know, you can order it to take you home from the pub when you're legless, you're going to need to cope with the fact that it's going to be absolutely covered in these funny FLIR radar jobs. Um, it's worth noting that when you actually go to a car manufacturer stand, it's all very worthy. Um, and, you know, the cars are self-driving and they emit nothing but love. But um, if you want to look at stuff that's actually good fun, you have to go to the stereo stands, or the car audio stands rather, because um, they don't quite hold with that as a concept. Now, now I won't lie, I don't like white cars. Life's too short to spend your life cleaning cars. Although Phil disagrees, although he gets someone to do it for him. Um, but, if the choice was taking this in white, or not taking it at all, I, you know, I'd knuckle down, I'd make do. I mean, the black roof sets it off a little bit. This is one of those cars that never looks as good in the pictures as it does in the metal slash composite slash all the other exciting bits of the periodic table that it's made out of. This is a genuinely, genuinely lovely thing. It's good to see a UK registration plate, albeit a bastardised one. Um, although it would appear either, I don't know if anyone can see this, either it's taken a really quite nasty scratch or it's got a really awkward shut line all the way down the bonnet. Poor show, Aston Martin. That's not what we're on about. Anyway, uh, the interior is a little bit sudden as well, but no, that's, that's a genuinely good looking car. Meanwhile, Honda appears to have built itself an autonomous quad bike. Let me see if I can get a bit closer to it. Now, I'm a, a simple soul. I always thought the purpose of these things is that you could ride on them, fall off and do yourself a serious injury, and this one doesn't seem to let you do that, so I'm not 100% sure what you do do with it. But um, of all the sort of autonomous vehicles doing the rounds, at least this one has... That's got a bit of character, doesn't it? And there's um, something over here. I don't know what this is. I'm gonna zoom in. It looks like a sort of mobile cat toy. I mean, if time was on my side, I could sort of stick around to wait to see what it's supposed to do. But um, at the moment, it, it appears to just have a travel pillow and a, well, let's not go with what the other thing on top of it looks like. It's, it's just a thing. And then along with the thing, is a box, a mystery box. I don't know what the mystery box does. It's just there. Um, if they happen to light it up whilst I'm on the stand, I'll come back and see what it does. Meanwhile, this is the Toyota stand, and um, they appear 
choosing my words carefully, to have brought, um, well, it looks like Darth Vader's invalid carriage. Um, it's got lots of wheels, two in each corner, and it, it just sort of, mm, well, it sits here looking threatening. Um, not a huge amount of information on it either, it's sort of like, have a look at our mystery box. Very big though. Probably got more get up and go than our hired Kia Soul, if I'm honest, but um, its function and interior remain a mystery. Meanwhile, over on Jeep's stand, it's got to be said that their vision of the future looks um, really much like their vision of the present, if I'm honest. But um, I don't know, there's something pleasantly, in a world of lots of little things that look like sort of ambitious milk floats, these are comfortingly rugged looking things. Um, I mean, again, I think you'd probably end up looking a bit of a bell end driving it in the UK, but you know, it's all it's all quite smart in itself, isn't it? Um, you know, there's four of the vehicles on the stand and largely speaking, they're all variations on a theme. This one with its uh, soft top is gonna make you look especially tittish, driving it in the drizzle near Slough, but you know, um, to each their own, rather smart. You know, by the standards of an American car interior, that's not half bad. Right then, answers on a postcard, because I don't know what this is. It's very purple, it's very low. One assumes it probably goes very fast. But, um, yeah, it's a mystery vehicle. Well, it took a while to find one, but here it is. Here's a Mustang in um, that's sort of the colour of Angel Delight, really, isn't it? Um, Boss 302. They're usually reasonably nippy. It's uh, probably not going to do terribly well in a speed bump ridden environment, but um, yeah, it's quite nice, isn't it? It's. Uh, going to induce terror in large swathes of the population here because look it's got this device which is linked to a pedal under the steering wheel and you have to use the two of them in sync to actually change the gears in the car how radical is that okay new entrant in the biggest truck competition um, Dodge this time, although that's a little, once again, it's on an audio manufacturer's stand. It's more a case of just taking a shell and sticking it full of stuff. Um, this one, when you take into account the amps under the seats, I'm, I think this might generally be really only suited to carrying two individuals, although you could probably drop it off the side of a multi storing building without causing it any uh, lasting grief. It's, um, it's a big lad. Um, it's got a luggage cover as well, so people won't nick your stuff at traffic lights, which is a nice touch. Although, once again, look, they filled it with amplifiers and, and, and stuff. So, again, despite the fact that it's very, very large indeed, you still can't get that much actual stuff into it. But I'm sure it sounds absolutely banging or something. Good news, darling. I am... Um Decided that we didn't need any boot space at all. <laughs> Meanwhile, for the Mopar contingent, I don't know if we've got any of those in the UK, but hell. Um, uh, this is a uh, particularly monkeyed about with example of a Challenger. Um, it's rather touching belief on the part of uh, a certain school of performance tuners that uh, simply lowering the tits off it and putting it on giant wheels is going to make it somehow perform better. Although that said, I don't think it's going to hang around looking at the state of that. Vibrant. Noisy, I think will probably be more accurate, but um, yeah, quite special. Again probably going to work better here than say I don't know High Wycom tucked away around the back of one of the stands new NSX and it's the first time I've seen a black one because I don't think 
someone please feel free to correct me on this, that you can buy the Honda as opposed to the Acura version that you see here in uh, black. And I think it looks pretty damn good in black. This is a properly, properly lovely thing. And I like the fact that as it's made by Honda, the chances are that it will realistically never, ever, ever go wrong. Um, so yeah, letters to Santa in the offing, I suspect. Um, this, I think, is one of those vehicles that you sit in and it liquefies your brain. Um, I don't really want to know quite how loud it goes in there. Quite amusing to play the archers on it though. 